I definitely feel like a kid at Christmas because now we got the Elegoo Saturn Max, Elegant Saturn 3 Max. And today I'm going to be showing you my first impressions, some of the prints that we did, the unboxing, of course, and my general opinion of this really, really cool printer. So let's go. So the box is actually a relatively small box compared to the Neptune, right? It's still big, but it's not like humongous. And um, everything's very neatly packed, which I really like because it does have more fragile components than the Neptune. However, everything was like perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, you can see here it has this sort of like extra protection on the border so that you don't get any hit. And everything is within like the capsule of the printer. That right there is the um, energy uh, cord that you connect. Technically, you should get one for your country. Since I'm in America, we got the American connection. We got the manual, which, by the way, I followed to the letter to do the installation and everything. The leveling card that I'm going to show you how to use in just a second. And uh, that's the printer right there. Everything is within this package. There's nothing else. In the Neptune box, I did mention that there were some kind of like hidden elements. But in this case, there's like nothing else. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the, for the unboxing there. Now, as for the components that come within the box, this is what we have right now. We have, of course, the big printer, nicely packaged and everything. And again, inside of this printer, you're going to see there the big foam and the protection is where you got all of your, like, like managing kit. I've been using resin 3D printers longer than I've been using FDM printers, so I'm quite used to the way they package things. And this one was, again, perfectly, perfectly fine. Now, uh, the setup, though, it is a little bit... I mean, resin is not more difficult than FDM. It's just more messy. So... Yeah, I'm going to explain what we, we have, of course, our production gloves. I got a full box of those, our little Allen keys, a little spatula to clean up the tank. This is the spatula to remove the print from the from the bed that I'm going to mention something important about that. Uh, the big charger and, of course, the filters in case you need to fill or refill your bottles with some resin. Some masks. Some people find the odor like very bad. I personally don't mind it at all or not much. That's the Wi-Fi antenna, by the way. This important. This one, this version has the option to send stuff through the Wi-Fi. And that's an air filter that does work quite nicely. So it filters some of the smell out of the room. Uh, there's a code for a special slicer. I use um, Cheetah Box, so not really, not really big change there. And uh, yeah, so this is the, again, the main components of the element. There's uh, the, the build plate actually screws like very tightly with that thing right there. And it has four screws that supports the whole like leveling process. Very important. You need to remove the like plastic films from the build plate, from the tank and from the screen. I've seen people online having issues with this where they try to print something and they forgot to remove one of those and they get issues. So make sure to follow the instructions, guys. It's not that difficult. So it has a couple of uh, protections there on the bolts. We're going to remove those once we do the leveling process. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So after that, I just assembled the air filter with the ghost on the on the back. The, um, uh, what what else? And the antenna, the Wi-Fi antenna. And uh, we're ready to start our leveling process. Now, leveling is, some people say it's like a science where you need to like really tweak things. Again, to me, I feel like these machines are very user-friendly in the fact that if you follow the procedure, nine times out of ten, you're not going to have any issues. Yes, there have been issues. I've had issues where I have to replace screens or FPFs or whatever. But the point is, again, if you follow the instructions, usually, more often than not, you're going to have a successful print. So in this case, the instruction is very simple. Just go to the tools. You zero out the position of the handle while all of the screws are um, loose, pretty much. And once you have that... You press with one of your hands, with um, either left or right, and you start tightening the knots. I like to use this uh, drum technique or the technique that they use for drums where they do like in this sort of cross section to even out the, the tightness of the plate so that we don't have anything. And ideally, when you try to take out the card, in this case, the leveling card, you should make sure to... Um, to have a little bit of resistance, but not too much, right? So it should be difficult to get it out, but not impossible. So yeah, that's it. That's me like loosening all of the screws right there. And again, after we do this, you bring this back, you tighten them up, and that's it. Again, I want to make a special distinction here. And, and while I'm doing this whole thing here on the screen, um, this um, printers, like resin printers, they are a little bit more tricky on the cleaning side of things, on the treatment for the resin. And the leveling does become a little bit more again, precise, I would say. So it's very common that you're going to have to re-level things. It's very common that you might have to change the screen on your little, like a build plate or your little pool. So if you want to get into 3D printing, you need to understand that even if you buy the fanciest 3D printer out there, you still need to do a little bit of like troubleshooting yourself. So my advice, go to Reddit, go to YouTube, 
follow the forums, ask for uh, advice in case you need it, and just follow the instructions, right? Because a lot of people think that the machine is just gonna work as it is out of the box, and there's always a little bit of tweaking that you need to do. For this particular one, I didn't do as much, neither did I did for the Neptune, so all of the prints that you've seen so far from me have been pretty much default things, but there are ways you can improve the quality, lowering exposure times, changing like um, speeds and, and stuff like that. If you really like that kind of stuff, go for it. Learn how those things work, what each parameter does and try to use it to generate a nice result. However, you're gonna see in just a second, for me, the default elements and the default things worked exactly as expected. So that's it, that's the leveling process right there. I didn't find any like issues and now you just place the little tank again there, you screw it back on and um, there's a little exposure test just to check that the screen is working perfectly fine. As you can see, it's a big, big screen by the way. I'm not sure if I've mentioned the size, but it's like four times the size of, uh, of a Mars, uh, of the Mars 3. So you're gonna see in the volume of how many pieces we can print. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting. I am using this rapid resin that Elegoo sent as well. And I haven't used this one before. I tried it with the Mars 3 and it worked fine, but I did have to change some of the settings on the exposure, both for the bottom layers and the main layers, because the bottom layers, when I used my default element or my default exposure, it was too difficult to take out. So I had to pretty much like bang the whole like plate to get the piece out. I actually broke uh, this first rook that you're gonna see right here when I was trying to get it out, because the addition was so, so big. So on the next sprints that you're gonna see, I lowered my bottom exposure time to 25 seconds and my layer exposure time to 1.5 seconds. And I feel like I can still tweak it a little bit more because this resin does cure really, really fast and you get a nice detail. So that was the first test. Again, straight out of the box, no changes, pre like included the files and everything and the rook printed perfectly, perfectly fine. Now this was the second test. This was the little environment piece that we modeled a couple of days ago and um, it printed nicely. It was a medium sized piece. I wanted to try like a bigger volume and it worked perfectly, perfectly fine. Then I'm a huge D&D fan. I tried to print uh, D&D minis, of course. These are from Artisan Guild. He's an amazing sculptor. You should check out his Patreon. And these ones are a full plate of medium sized creatures. So four medium sized creatures with their vases, all of their weapons, everything, and they fit perfectly fine. Everything stuck to the bed, every single thing printed, no failures whatsoever. You can see here, sorry for the format there on the video, but you can see here the full build plate. They're just like snake and naga people. You're gonna see them in just a second. And the result was amazing. And then of course, we had to print our own stuff, right? So I printed our result from our Seabrush Premium course, which was the Oni, and I printed big, 20 centimeters. Look at that guy right there. Again, no failure, no addition issues, every single support printed nicely, every single detail printed as perfectly as you could ask for. Uh, I actually used most of this was automatic support, so no big deal. I did run this through Cheeto box though. So I did like manage or change a couple of the settings that I was mentioning for the exposure. But once what that was done, that's it. Look at the detail of these guys. Look at the scales. I wanted to try this ones because I knew that the scales were gonna be a big hit right here. And you can see how sharp and how clean all of those scales look. You can even see the little fangs on the, on the head there. I just had one fang break while I was cleaning them. But other than that, perfectly, perfectly fine for everything. This one I really liked. It has it like a, this like weapon, like chain axe on the top and every single like link of the chain perfectly printed, all of the scales, barely any damage. I really like this resin because it barely leaves any damage on the, like on the main points. On the big ones, you are gonna see some damage and I'm gonna show them on this piece right here. So this piece on the bottom part, I think I did went a little bit heavy with the support, so you can see it right there. And uh, it definitely left a little bit of, uh, of an, uh, a damage there. Nothing that you can send out, especially because it's, it's a base, but um, just be careful with, with the placement of your supports there. And the finally, look at this guy. I'm so happy to see this guy finally printed in, I would say like a collector's size, right? So this is 20 centimeters from top to the tip of the horns. And uh, it just looks really, really good. I really like the final result for this guy right here. You're gonna see him here compared to another uh, six, inch, six inch figure that I have and it's quite big. Single piece, I did not hollow this one out. I know I could have saved a little bit of resin, but I wanted to try like a big print to see if the heavy weight would make the, the print fall. It did not. So full print, single piece, no keys, no anything, and look at the difference. That's my drifts from D&D, six figure, like standard Marvel Legends size against the, the big Oni right there. So yeah, that's it guys. This is all of the prints that I've done so far. I'm gonna be printing way more stuff of course, but so far this printer has not disappointed. I've been using Elegoo for again the past like six years and it's always been very, very easy to work with. Yes, there's a little bit of troubleshooting, but at the end of the day, you need to know a little bit about 
like how to troubleshoot this sort of stuff if you're gonna be going into the 3D printing world. It's a very technical and artistic thing that I personally love because it combines two things that I really like, which is again, like artistry and technical things. So yeah, if you have questions about this one, I feel a little bit more qualified to answer any, any questions about resin 3D printers because I've used them for longer. But you feel free to just leave them down here on the comment section. And if you wanna check the printer, if you wanna give it a go or maybe buy one, there's gonna be also a link here in the description so that you can check all of the options that Elegoo has. I've used this brand again several times now and the one thing I don't think I've mentioned it just yet but we've been getting a lot of sponsors lately and of course I'm really really grateful for that but I, I want to make I want to be very clear I'm never going to be sponsoring any item that first of all I do not believe in or a brand that I do not believe in and second an item that I have not tested myself. So that's why I wanted to wait I actually got this printer like five days ago I wanted to wait until all of the prints were ready so that I could really see if if it was working the way I was expecting it to work. And so far, it has my thumbs up. So again, if you wanna check it out, the link's gonna be down here in the description. Thank you to the Elegoo guys for this uh, little, uh, well, not a little big printer and all of the resin so that we can do our tests. And let's keep going. Let's keep doing more stuff. What should we print next?